Hey guys, welcome back to Ace Recaps. Today I'm going to be explaining a 2016 horror sci-fi film titled, A Cure for Wellness. In the opening scene, a man named Morris is working late in his office. He begins to feel discomfort in his chest. Morris goes to get some water when the pain becomes unbearable. He then has a heart attack and collapses on the floor. We are introduced to Mr. Lockhart who's on his way to work. He is absorbed in his work and appears rude and uncaring to others. Lockhart attends a meeting with Hank Green, Hollis, and Wilson. They go over a note sent by the company's chief executive officer, Roland Pembroke, who was meant to be gone for two weeks in a spa in the Swiss Alps but has yet to return. And, as the note suggests, he looks to have experienced a mental breakdown. Green shows Lockhart an unlawful document he handed out, which is now being investigated. Lockhart is instructed to bring Pembroke back or face the consequences of his actions. In a flashback, Lockhart pays a visit to his elderly mother in a retirement facility. She holds a little music box with a ballerina who she claims is merely dreaming. Before Lockhart's departure, his mother dies and is cremated, and he keeps the ballerina. When Lockhart arrives in Switzerland, he hires a cab driver named Enrico and rides up the hill to the spa. When a villager throws a drink at the car, Enrico reveals that the villagers have a nasty history with the folks who live on the hill. There is a 200-year-old legend about a baron who lived on the property where the spa was later constructed. He was a bigot, a fascist, and he believed that his bloodline was superior, therefore he married his sister to protect his bloodline. When the baron discovered she was sterile, he began conducting experiments on the townspeople and peasants, killing many which prompted them to rise and attack his castle, destroying most of it and burning the baron and his sister alive. The area was later purchased by Dr. Heinrich Fulmer's ancestors for medicinal and rehabilitation purposes, centered on the claimed rejuvenative effects of the holy waters and the vast natural aquifer lying within the mountain itself. Dr. Vollmer then transformed it into a wellness spa. Lockhart arrives at the spa, but it has just closed for the day. He departs with Enrico, telling him to take him to a hotel so he may make a phone call because there is no service on the hill. On the way to the hotel, a deer jumps out of the woods and into the road. Enrico hits the deer, which gets trapped in the windshield and causes the car to swerve off the road and smash into a ditch. Three days later, Lockhart wakes up and meets Dr. Heinrich Vollmer, the spa's director, who informs him that he suffered a broken leg as a result of the accident. Volmer claims he informed Green of the accident. During his stay, he tells Lockhart to try out the spa treatments. He is placed in a room where he can hear the toilet handle rattling on its own. Lockhart also drinks some water and discovers a parasitic organism floating in the glass. He meets Pembroke in the bathhouse, where he goes swimming. Lockhart begs Pembroke to accompany him home. Pembroke looks to be in good health and has no plans to leave. Lockhart meets Frank Hill, Ronner, and Victoria Watkins, three patients. Crossword puzzles are a favorite pastime of Watkins. The three of them appear to be very satisfied with their treatments. Lockhart then meets Hannah, a young woman who sees herself as an outlier. She and numerous other patients, as well as Volmer and other staff personnel, are often observed taking vitamin drops from a blue bottle. Lockhart is then treated inside a water tank. The water level rises, and the orderly caring for Lockhart is distracted by a nurse. The tank then becomes overrun by eels, leading him to panic. Lockhart rises and gets yanked off his breathing tube by an eel. He almost drowns until they open the tank and get him out just in time. He tells them about the eels, but when they look inside, they find nothing. Lockhart is still certain of what he saw. He runs into Mrs. Watkins outside. During their talk, he tells her about the Baron. She seemed to be well versed in the story. She is aware of the rumors surrounding the castle and the Baron, having studied and learned about its history while working crossword puzzles. Watkins says the Baron's sister successfully conceived his child and the infant was taken out of the Baron's sister's womb and then dumped into the aquifer, but it survived. In exchange for a bike trip into town, Lockhart gives Hannah his ballerina figurine. They go together and stop at a nearby tavern. Lockhart buys beers for himself and Hannah and runs into Enrico, who survived the accident and was given a new car with money from the spa. Hannah stays to listen to music and perform a solo dance in front of the other customers. 
Lockhart discovers a barn with a mute youngster painting the castle fire. Peter, his father, approaches Lockhart. He inquires about the spa and its history. Peter then visits an ill and near-death cow. He cuts open the cow's tummy, revealing a stillborn calf and some meals. When Lockhart returns to Hannah at the bar, he contacts Green, who demands to know what happened to him and Pembroke. Lockhart claims that Volmer called them about the accident, but Green was unaware of it until Lockhart just addressed it. He directs Lockhart to accompany Pembroke back to New York within the next 24 hours. When he gets back to the tavern, he notices a punk dancing alongside her. Lockhart tries to get him away from her, but he is attacked by the punk. Volmer, who is on his way to pick up Lockhart and Hannah, saves him and takes them back to the spa. That night, Lockhart enters a room and finds Hannah in a bathtub. He observes that it is teeming with eels. He awakens and realizes it was all a dream. Lockhart's tooth becomes loose, and he extracts it himself. He hands it to a member of staff, who immerses it in water. Lockhart then departs to continue his search for answers. As he moves through the wings, he sneaks by the staff. He stumbles across one chamber where several people, including Pembroke, look to be dead within water tanks. When Lockhart attempts to return to his room, he is discovered by the caretaker, Volmer, and another staff member. Lockhart brings up his teeth problem. He is led into a room and strapped down while a drill force is applied to his front teeth. Lockhart flees the spa and walks into town to inform a police officer about Volmer's activities. Volmer and a member of his staff arrive to return Lockhart. He mentions the tanks and his encounter with Pembroke. Pembroke then appears to be alive and well. Volmer believes Lockhart intimidated Pembroke and threatened to bring him back to New York by force if necessary. Lockhart is forced to return with Volmer. After several treatments, Lockhart begins to act and think like Pembroke, believing he is ill and needs to stay for a cure. While composing a note to his employers, he experiences a flash of insight and realizes that no man can unsee the truth. Meanwhile, Hannah is swimming in the water when she gets her first period. Eels begin to swim near her, but then they begin to swim in a perfect circle around her. Lockhart then breaks a glass and cuts open his cast with a shard, revealing that his leg was never injured. He also discovers an underground section with a pool where corpses are dumped and fed to eels. Mrs. Watkins happens to be one of those dead bodies. The caretaker assaults Lockhart until Lockhart forces steam to blast in his face before bludgeoning the carer to death. Hannah is discovered by Lockhart. She is terrified and punches Lockhart in the face as he attempts to help her. Hannah runs into a room where Bomber, the staff, and some patients are enjoying dinner. Lockhart rushes in and begins to tell everyone that Volmer is a liar and is to blame for everyone being sick due to whatever is in the water, which is also to blame for their teeth falling out as a side effect. Patients begin to stand, which Lockhart thinks is in support of him, but they are all actually going against him as they slowly approach him saying that they are ill. They all swarm around Lockhart until he collapses. He then awakens in a chamber in which he is motionless. Volmer inserts a tube down his throat and injects an eel-filled liquid into his body, where the eels filter out the vitamins that Volmer requires all of his patients to take. Lockhart has his teeth corrected and appears to be transformed, much like the rest of the patients who are certain he is ill. Volmer hosts a celebration for the patients and workers that night. In his room, he even offers Hannah a new dress for the occasion. Lockhart gradually comes to his senses as he recalls what Watkins told him about the Baron. He discovers a portrait taken not long after the fire. Lockhart smashes the painting and magnifies one of the subjects, a man with bandages all over his face. The skin of the Baron was burned in the fire. The portrait does not depict the man holding hands with a little girl. Hannah was the one. She appeared to have matured slowly over many years into a young woman when she should have died. Lockhart has realized by this point that the Baron is Volmer, and Hannah is his daughter. Hannah is led into a room near the transfusion wing by Volmer. He keeps a portrait of his sister, who was also Hannah's mother. Volmer ties Hannah to the bed and begins undressing her. Lockhart then interrupts Volmer's struggle, during which Volmer removes the skin off his face, revealing himself as the horribly disfigured Baron. The vitamins he gets from the patients by driving eels through their systems have kept him and Hannah alive for over a century.
He discovered that the eels that live and breed in the aquifer are a distinct species 200 years ago. They have the potential to live for up to 300 years. The aquifer extended their lives, but the water is hazardous to human use. After intensive research, he determined that forcing the eels into a person's digestive tract and collecting the material their bodies create makes the water's youth extending benefits viable for human usage. He kept Hannah and his loyal followers alive and ageless for so long that they may return and resume the experiments on people one day. This time, under the pretext of a wealthy targeted wellness spa. Hannah, of course, had no idea because he had kept her in the dark for so long. He wanted to force her to conceive his child, resulting in what he considers to be a master race, but all of the biological tinkering was unnecessary. But the vitamins had postponed the start of puberty for her until now. Lockhart lures Volmer into a trap where he drops a large amount of fuel and starts a fire. Volmer unintentionally lights up the curtains after catching fire. As he tries to extinguish himself, the fire spreads across the castle. Lockhart tries to save Hannah. He is able to free her hands before Volmer grabs him and slams him onto a metal rack. Lockhart is kicked down a flight of stairs to the eel pool by Volmer. He raises his head to find the lifeless body of Pembroke in front of him. Volmer brings him to the water and prepares to feed him to the eels, but Hannah grabs a shovel and swings it down into Volmer's head. He falls backward into the water and becomes eel food. Hannah and Lockhart flee. They steal Hannah's bike and ride away on the road as the patients and staff evacuate the burning castle. On their way, a car stops them. Green, Holly and Wilson walk out, ordering Lockhart into the car. When they inquire about Pembroke, Lockhart informs them that he has left. They tell him to come back in, but he refuses. Holly inquires as to what is wrong with him. He says he is feeling much better. With a nasty smirk on Lockhart's face, he and Hannah continue riding away into the darkness. That's all folks. Thank you for watching. If you like the video please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a great day.